Hello there, my name is Anton Duplessis and I'm an application scientist at ORS. Um, I'm making the, the first of a number of videos to help you to unlock more information from your CT scans. Today's video is focusing on industrial inspection. So um, I, I'm starting from the basics and it's aimed at new users, but I do move fast. So you're welcome to just pause the video and go back if you missed something. Um, I hope that's useful like that. I'm going to share my screen here. All right, so this is the interface of Dragonfly when you open it up the first time. So I'm starting by demonstrating how to load the image, import image files. In this case, we're adding an image stack, um, a slice image stack. So we highlight all images in the folder and import it, uh, click next. In this case, I know the voxel size is 0 0.2 millimeters. And just note here that um, the decimal point or comma follows the convention of your system. So just check that. So that's how you load up data and it opens up a slice image in the first place. Um, if you would like to see the quad view, this is under the layout um, and at this location here. So in this way, you can see the 3D render, which can be easily adjusted using this shortcut here. I'm not going to go into all these details today. I, um, this is not a comprehensive video. This is simply to demonstrate what is possible and how to, which functions to apply. So for, um, first of all, getting a nice 3D visual of your part, simplest is to choose a preset such as cast aluminum. And that's very nice. So you can double click the view and evaluate the surface of this part very easily and very nicely. And you can zoom in and out using uh, holding the, the scroll wheel in and dragging back and forth. Uh, moving is uh, keeping the left and right mouse buttons pre depressed and dragging. That app, that is, those functions are valid in all views, but in order to rotate the object physically in the um, uh, relative to this um, recorded um, coordinate system, we use the translate rotate tools. So in this case, you you have to click on a window in order to get it active, active, and then turn it like this. So click, take take this, and turn it. So now we have the the views nice and orthogonal, and we can press escape to get out of that mode. Right. So if we're now in the bottom left view, you can see where you are scrolling the right views but not in the 3D view yet. So in this case, we will just right click here and add a 2D view plane function. So you can see where you are exactly in this, in this 3D view. Um, what I also like to do is in the 3D view, I like to change the background. So that's the button to do that. And you choose uniform white, I, that's simpler in many cases. All right, so um, the next step is to actually qualitatively, in, in industrial inspection, you're interested to evaluate if there are cracks and pores and what the extent of those are. So we need to change the contrast. We do this with uh, something called the Windows Leveling Tool, which is at the top here. And um, what you do is you can uh, drag these things. You can also choose, I like to choose this opacity um, uh, a gradient and then drag this left bar to the right and uh, move that around uh, in order to get a good contrast. So in this case, this is giving us a nice view of some of the largest pores. There are also some small ones. This is a typical casting. So there's a lot of uh, shrinkage porosity inside. And this is one of the main applications of CT, of course, is to understand the extent and size and distribution of these casting pores. So in some cases where you have less porosity or you're interested in evaluating that in the same way, but over a number of slices, um, what we can do is quite easily choose a minimum view mode at this place. And what this does is it integrates over a number of slices and chooses the lowest value 
pixel at each location. So in this case, if we evaluate across this entire region, we see all pores in that region in one slice image. It's also called a thick slab mode. So it's a, a way to highlight if all pores are along a certain orientation or in, along a certain direction. It's quite a um, useful additional tool. So let's move out of this mode and back to the normal slice mode. <clears throat> the next evaluation of interest is porosity. And to evaluate that uh, in more detail quantitatively. So to do that, we go to the segment tool. We need a segmentation. Segmentation is one of the strong points of Dragonfly software. I don't have time to go into much details here, but so I will just simply do a define range. In this case, I already, you can use automated lower or two thresholding approach, or I've already evaluated this data and 42,000 manual threshold gives a good result for this porosity. So what we do is it's now made a region of interest, an ROI containing all voxels with values of gray values less than 42,000. This of course includes the outsides. We want to remove that. Quite simple, right click, refine the region of interest, process can islands, which are connected regions. So we just remove the largest. New, remove the largest one connected region, which is quite easy. And now only the middle inside ones are left. <clears throat> so if we untick the fine range, we only see the region of interest, which is this green color. You can of course change it. Let's make it, let's make it yellow. So we can more easily see um, that the largest pores are actually in this region of interest. Of course, many are missed. And this is a topic for a different discussion with partial volume effects, there are not enough voxels to define that clearly as a, a, a pore. And that's why we usually use only the largest pores for, for this kind of quantitative analysis. So we would like to um, see this now in three dimensions. This is um, a region of interest still and not quantitatively analyzed, but we would like to see it in 3D. So a simple way that I use is simply to change the contrast into this flat um, kind of approach here with opacity. And in this case, if I activate the 3D view, you will see these pores here. The region of interest actually needs to be, um, the highlight needs to be increased in order to get it brighter there, but this is quite simply the, the way to do this. So. In the image channel, um, what I can also do is just remove, just uh, refine it a little bit to get a nice view. And what we want now is a quantitative analysis. So we right click here and we create a multi ROI. So this multi region of interest is what we use for evaluating more detailed um, things like voxel count or volume, surface area, and so on. I'm only going to tick for on volume and mean ferret diameter today and click OK. So we're only going to evaluate these pores as a function of their volume and uh, ferret diameter. So you have all this data available and what we're going to do, what we want to do here is we want to visualize this in 3D. So we untick the region of interest and we tick the 3D view for this. So if you're clicking on this, um, so what we see here is at the moment, we have no color bar because we didn't select any analysis yet. These are just uh, color coding individual uh, pores. So the measurement itself, we want to, if we want to cl classify them according to volume, this, the largest one is the yellow one over there. And if we want to classify according to the mean ferret diameter, the, lo the longest, the highest ferret diameter is also this elongated one, as you can imagine. So this is the three-dimensional um, view of this porosity. And you can also you have all this available data available in, um, and which can be ex exported to Excel or um, other formats for further processing. And, um, the next step then that I, I want to keep this video short without going into too much details. So what I want to do is I want to go back 
I, I want to um, evaluate again this um, the, the solid part, and in this case, without the, um, I want to just move back to the normal rendering. Right. So in this case, now what I would like to do is I would like to evaluate the wall thickness here. So in order to do that, we need a new region of interest again, and in this case, we want all the material highlighted, including pores. So in this case, we define range, choose upper Otsu, and add to new. So this new region of interest is now covering all the material, but the pores are not in this region of interest yet. So the way to add that is to fill in their areas, apply, and you will see this pore being filled here. So this region of interest is now covering the entire part. What we do to get a thickness is export to a thickness mesh in a normal way, perform smoothing to simplify the, uh, the processing time and the visualization, and OK. So this takes uh, uh, maybe one or two minutes, depending on the data size and the difficulty, uh, the thick wall thickness involved. The evaluation of wall thickness is important for some uh, key areas where walls need to be above a certain minimum value, and it can be quite useful as a, a simple visualization tool, as you will see in a minute. So um, as we wait for that analysis to complete, I just want to say that I'm excited about making more videos like this to help you to extract more value from your CT data. Dragonfly, of course, is powerful and not only for CT data, it can also be used for any kind of uh, imaging modality, any images, same images, FIB same images, and so on. So please subscribe to our channel for more content and please get in touch if you want to see a particular uh, application or a particular kind of analysis. We're happy to create more content like this. So we're almost done. <clears throat> These progress bars are actually quite accurate in most cases. All right, so the analysis is complete. The thickness, thickness mesh is available, but it's not visualized automatically. So you need to tick the, the view button here. And there you see very nicely in three dimensions, the thickness distribution. So in order to, uh, it's, uh, you need to click on the button and move the sample in order to highlight the thickness mesh uh, values here. It's, uh, uh, Thickness values range up to almost 70 millimeters across the thickest part. And this thickness um, can then help you to identify if some regions of a part are very thin. In this case, actually, there's a region which was identified here, which I did not see in the original data. That's exactly the use of it. So there's a thin section here, which uh, should be punched through. All right, and that's everything I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click the like button and subscribe for more content and get in touch if you want to see something else. Thank you.